All right. It's Watch Me Work. It's, it's um, what day is it? It's Tuesday. August and, 11th. Uh, August 11th, all day long. And uh, we've been doing the show for 11 years. Um, and uh, we started in this, uh, we started in the lobby of the public theater. And th so thank you to the public theater for supporting us all these years. HowlRound came on a few years ago to help us live stream from the lobby of the public theater. And now HowlRound and the public theater have joined forces to create, help us create this beautiful mosaic experience that we have today. Um, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. We, uh, we work together for 20 minutes and then I take questions from y'all about your work and your creative process. It's that simple. And uh, yeah, I'm just thinking, yeah, on the 13th of August, I will have been on hiatus for my show for five months. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. So anyway, so if you want to ask questions um, during uh, the question and answer time, Audrey is going to tell you how to get in touch. Go, Audrey. Thanks, SLP. Um, so as many of you know, if you are inside of the Zoom and you want to ask a question, all you need to do is click on the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top on an iPad or a tablet. Um, you click on the participant tab and out will pop a little box and you click the raise your hand button in that box. A little blue hand pops up and I will call on you if we've got time. Um, if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, all you need to do is tweet at us at at WatchWeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, or you can tweet at the Public Theater, uh, which is at Public Theater NY, uh, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram, uh, and that's it. I'm, I'm looking at the news because Kamala Harris is going to be the next vice president. Is that yes. true? That is, that is some fuck. Yep. All right. Well, you know shit's you know shit needs some work when you call a sister to take the job. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know it's like <clears throat> all right. I mean, I said the same thing with Hillary. You know, I voted for Hillary. I'm like, you know shit's deep when you call a woman in. Yeah, because you got to get the shit done. Uh, anyway, speaking of getting shit done, here Let's we are. Let's do it. Let's do it. <sighs>
right, all right. All right, all right. So, her middle name is Devi. Interesting. Goddess. I think she needs to write the play in November. Mm-hmm. Anyway, any questions? Not yet. No. Oh, we've got one. Oh, it's Crystal. Hey, hey, wow. Yeah. Where are you, girl? How you doing? Hi. I'm doing good. <laughs> How's it going? Um, good. Good. So, um, just to update you, um, I, um, I presented and the response I got was that it was a thousand percent improved and that it was, um, a thousand fold improved. And I forget, he was greatly impressed and all this stuff. And he, uh, <laughs> so he was like, but there's still work to do. And I was like, okay, cool. That's cool. That's fine. That's fine. Um, he, um, I, he still asked if I was like interested in working on the the other one and I called him and I told him you know I was talking with my director and we really want to crack this character and we want to get it right and and he said I respect that and you know um I I figured that because you you did so much work on it and so he uh (laughs) So I'm gonna stay with the project, but I'm gonna stay with the demagogue that I chose. Um, I'm not gonna do another one. So, <laughs> so I feel I feel better about it now. And um, you know, I have the rest of the summer to dedicate to that. And I'm still, you know, working on um, the father, the 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 demagogue. Uh, I'm sorry, the Father Chronicles. Because uh, I would like to take a portion of it and submit it to a, a, a play festival, um, but I'll save that question for later in, in the week. Um, now that I'm on a new draft, um, one of the things that was said to me was that I haven't cracked the character yet. Still, the need is not is not there. It's mostly talked about and not um, and not shown, and so I'm trying to figure out like this is will be my eighth draft (laughs) and I'm trying to figure out okay what don't I know about her like what what maybe I've I think I've done so much research that I've just kind of written around the research and so I'm trying to figure out like how can I get like inside deeper inside um and find that I don't know what it is to crack what makes her become this this person um i mean i know like the i know the 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 some of the childhood things and i'm trying to explore that a little bit more i'm trying to now explore okay maybe what are her relationships um with men for her to be you know um to be in the place that she's in and so i'm just trying to ex- trying to figure out like I don't know if I should write a list uh, like of 10 stupid things that make her, <laughs> you know, a demagogue. <laughs> like, I don't know what, what else I can do to, to go even deeper than, I, than I've been doing in these last drafts. Like, I don't know what, what I see the notes. I understand the notes. I just don't, don't know what to do to uh, apply them um, to the next draft. Wow. I mean, First of all, come on, (laughs) girl, come on. You were like in the valley of the shadow of death. Oh my God. Yeah. Girl, you were like, "Mm -mm." you were like, no way. And then (laughs) after you did all that work for your producer person to come at you with that curveball of a note and for you to hang in there. And then for them to be impressed with the work that you've done and tell you that, which is, which is very good of them, very right of them, very righteous of them, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just broom it away and get you to do what they want to do. And then for you to say, actually, I want to stick with this. 
And then for them to say, we respect you for that because of all the work you've done. <laughs> does it, how does it feel? How do you feel? I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> I feel like I'm supposed to be writing. I'm supposed to be writing and that I'm supposed to work as hard as I've been working. I'm supposed to be doing it and that I'm supposed to keep going. Good, good, good. And that's exactly the mantra that you need to get over this next hurdle, right? Okay, yeah. Okay. So know that, know that you're supposed to be writing about this person. You're supposed to be writing this piece. And, you know, if, you, if all you have to do is you have to do the work and it's going to show up for you, Okay those answers about the need. And again, I don't know your place specifically, so I can't specifically speak to it. Um, did the, 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 in the notes, did they specifically say what they weren't getting? I mean, did they kind of point you in a general direction of helpful direction, given what they have read already? Um, in the notes, it was um, the hope, the hope was, was missing that I hadn't cracked her. Um, the, the, secondary character became kind of became the 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 um the protagonist instead mm -hmm. of her and he okay. thinks that it could be because her need was not strong enough okay um okay. and so he said the the how do you feel about the notes i feel like i feel like you know i i understand again i understand them it's just i think trying to translate it into a way where i can write it you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I don't know if, you know again if that means writing new scenes or deepening what I've written he said the demagoguery should take place in the very beginning that we should mm -hmm. see her in her demagoguery at the mm -hmm. very beginning okay. instead of later okay. which I which that just means okay just take a portion and bring it to the top like I can do that mm -hmm. um um, um, so he, you know, he, he really liked what I did with this, um, interdependency of, um, of the demagogue and the, the secondary, the nephew, uh, the cousin, cousin. the mm -hmm. cousin, mm -hmm. and like how it became that she needed him to, to propel herself into this, this, this leader of this movement, um, um, and that without him was a big hole. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I see that the need is him, but I think, as, I think apart from him, what, mm -hmm. is, what is the need? What is the absolute yeah. need for her and herself? Right. Do you know the play uh, King Lear? Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, I mean, again, I haven't read your play and, and you know so that's i'm just kind of talking you know at the side of my neck but you know king lear talking about the, the a big action at the beginning of the play you know the the very first not first scene but i think it's the second scene he divides up his kingdom you know mm -hmm. hand me the give me the map you know and he starts slicing and dicing Who right most? you 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 huh you know that kind of thing okay so his big action you could call it you know of of assertion of who to man you know it comes at the very top and then you see him kind of go through other things as a result of that right right so okay so you're going to move some of her demagoguery stuff to the beginning to to address that note and then you're going to see how it changes her character throughout the course of your play right mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. just something she's doing it's something that she does and has consequences and has fallout Right? right? Right. So if, and if you don't have an action like that, then the action should be something like that, that has consequences. Okay. Yeah. You understand I what I mean? Yeah, I do. Okay. The second thing to go deeper with your character um, is, do you talk to your character at all? You know, she's like one of the only characters I haven't spoken to. Okay. That well, that's I've... kind of problematic, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, or, or, you know, I mean, if you had nailed it and there were no notes, it wouldn't be problematic. But since you haven't yet, yet uh -huh. is the key word, you haven't yet. 
And you also have not yet really had conversations with her. Maybe you ought to try that. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because if you talk to her and you really listen, she's probably going to tell you things that you need to know. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, and you can also make a list of 10 dumb things. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so those are three things. You can put that action at the beginning your producer suggested. I think that's a good idea. Show the consequences of that action, the fallout of that action, the real fallout. So mm -hmm. it might change some scenes, you know, mm -hmm. and start having conversations with your main character, real conversations. You can just ask her right out, you know, why are you like you are? Why you do this? What's your need? You can just ask her, you know, she might bob and weave and ramble, but, um, yeah yeah okay okay See yeah comes up okay okay and then um and then i'll come back yeah but but you know that <laughs> thing about i know that i'm supposed to be writing this or whatever yeah. i'm paraphrasing what you said have you like written that down anywhere just now okay good <laughs> so take an index card do you write it? Well, you write at the dining room table. I'm trying to remember, Crystal, where you write. Where you write? Where I do write you write? In my bedroom. Okay. So in your writing space, put it on an index card. Write it out legibly. Right. Maybe draw some fun colors around it. Whatever, but let it be legible, and stick it to your wall, or a, a nice place in your writing space. If you don't have a wall that you can devote to it, stick it to the front of a, uh, stick it to the inside of a notebook. You know like that wherever someplace where you can open it up and see it when you wake up in the morning repeat it during the day say it if you go for a walk walking your dog or playing with your kids or you guys go for a walk around the block whatever say it to yourself okay yeah okay. and also say you know um i know the needs of my character and she's going to tell me and she's telling me the needs her needs okay okay just hypnotize yourself. Okay. And then remember, Kamala, Kam Kamala, 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 Kamala. Kamala. Mm -hmm. Her second name is Devi. Devi means goddess. We know we're in trouble now. <laughs> 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 well, you know. Yeah. Anyway. It's a good day. Yeah, it's a good day. Yeah. Thanks, Crystal. Thanks, Thank you so much. Congratulations, sister. I'm so proud Thank of you. you. I got to say, wow. <laughs> you really Thank have done a huge, 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 great job. So you should be very proud of yourself. Okay? Thank you. And yes. use this good energy to fuel you over the next hurdle. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Thank sure. you. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, all right. We're going to go to Larry. Are you there? Here. Hi. Um, well, that was uh, majorly inspiring. And I just, I don't really have a question. I just was kind of inspired and I wanted to express my own gratitude for being part of this community. I'm, uh, I guess, relatively new to it. And um, yesterday I finished a, a beastie 116 page first act of my play. <laughs> So, Ooh, wow 100 and how many pages first act what 116 oh my so goodness I, I have some work to do but um <laughs> i don't want to sit through that but uh it's great to just have um say i'll worry about that later and just produce and um you know i started this as a device project and so much of what ended up happening is, is I just wrote it myself and realized that it, it was kind of my play all along, certainly inspired by everyone. And I'm happy to share the credit. It's not about credit, but I, I just, uh, it just all ended up going, getting channeled through me. But the other thing I really wanted to say was that uh, I'm a teacher. So I have this chronic thing where every August it's like, oh, I squandered another summer. I squandered another summer, all the things I thought I was going to do with my summer that I didn't do. I've, I mean, I had that when I was a kid. I've had it my whole life. I'm 55. And this is truly the first summer I ever looked at my vision 
of what I wanted to do. And it was done and it's entirely because I enlisted other people um, here and in other, every aspect of my life. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking trying to do shit alone. Um, uh, I don't know why that's so valuable to do things alone. Because <laughs> right now I don't care uh, about doing it alone. And so I just really, so much of what I achieved this summer was because I enlisted other people to sit on a screen with me or just accountability and create and, you know, obviously find out that I'm not alone in this issue. So I just wanted to just call out how grateful I am for this experience and how it mirrors um, so many of the things I've learned in my life that I, where I was trying to do shit alone, I had no business doing alone. So gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Larry. We, have, we all feel the same way, you know, but thank you for putting it into words. Thank you, Larry. Um, all right, we're gonna go to Christina. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Hey. Hey, sis, how are you? I'm good, how are you? It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see your face. That's kind mm -hmm. of all I need, but I need a lot more, but this is great. Um, um, I want to uh, echo Larry. This is the first time I've actually been to this, so I don't, or virtually or in person, which is insane, but um, I just, it's incredible, and I'm really thankful to share this space with you, all of you guys. Um, and with that, I have a question before I ask my question is, should I brief you a little bit about where I'm at or should I just ask my question like about the, what I'm working on or should I just jump in? Mm, give a little, give a little brief, give a little, give a brief, 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 brief. Great. <laughs> um, I'm writing an ensemble play that I've been working on since 2017. The mm -hmm. root of what it's about has remained the same. Um, but like the final, the main point and what I would say, like the thesis, I guess, has shifted a little bit um, in the last three years. Um, so my question is, what do you do when you, if you find, or when you find that you're juggling a lot of ideas that you're excited about, um, or, or juggling just so many ideas that to the point where it's, it's stifling. Like that's kind of where I'm at with this play and also with writing a lot of different things. So it's to the point where I, there's so much that I'm excited about and anxious about that I am have stifled myself somehow. Um, so I was wondering if you have ways of working through that. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And it's great to see you again, Christina. Christina is a director and a writer and was hanging out with us when we were working on White Noise. So it's great to see you, sis. Um, uh, I, I get organized. I mean, not to in a, in a stupid way, but I, I tend to lean on, on organizational principles that um, I find helpful. And yeah. sometimes they're just totally, you know, random and everything. They don't come from any book. They just kind of are drawn from what works. So when I suggest things to you, if it works, great, try it. If it doesn't seem like it's good, then put it aside and maybe try it again later. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, so if you're working on you've been working on a play for a, several years right mm -hmm. um, you come back you come back to it and stuff and it's kind of morphing and changing is that is yeah that um, I yes it's a three-part play last year it, I got the first part uh, produced mm -hmm. a workshop of it so right now I'm kind of working on part two um, mm -hmm. and revisiting things but yes that is kind of the vibe of every Mm -hmm. few months or so I come back to it um but specifically need to put it down for a little while sometimes right but you're 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 you want to work on it now is that correct yeah you want to work on it now and you want to get at least the second part done is that correct correct yeah great okay and the the problem is is that a lot of ideas are coming in at you and it's kind of twisting your head okay yeah. so right so um you can do the same thing in two different ways first you have to just decide okay you're going to decide it's like dating and i know i know y'all like to go out with like lots of different people and shit i don't you know no, we're good. you want to get we're serious good. and everything you, you. commit to one i'm a, you know what i'm gonna go out gonna go out with you 
for the next 10 days. Okay, so just choose one of those ideas, one of those ways of doing it for the next draft. Okay, and what's a draft? How long is your draft going to be, do you think? Around between 60 and 75. Okay, or... so can you stick with one idea for the draft? Yes. This is the story of my play. Mm -hmm. Boom, right? Like we said to Crystal, write it out on an index card, smack it to the wall, whatever, right? And when you're writing, look at it. That's the story. Repeat it to yourself. Really embrace it. This is going to be your, your steady, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And you're not, you're, you're going to, you're going to be constant and loyal to this story, this way of telling the story of your play. Right. Okay. So that will help you keep focus. It's like horses, you know, they got blinders on that. Why they got blinders? Cause horses are like, Oh, look, that looks good over there. And they're gone. And then like, you know, where are they? I don't know. Right. Okay. So you're going to give yourself some blinders. It's very effective. Um, that will help you stick to this main story or theme of your play. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you have a lot of different projects. It sounds like, is that correct? Yes. Right. So you're going to divide up your day in segments. Mm -hmm. Again, this may or may not work for you. Okay. This is something I do. I've been doing for the last five months since I went on hiatus with my show. I've had to work on two or more projects at the same time. These are high level projects for people who pay me a lot of money and demanded it. You know, they wanted it done like last week. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I do is I spend the first uh, often two hours of the day, two hours of the work day. You know, you get up, do whatever you're doing. It's two hours block working on project A. And then spend a another time block, maybe three hours, maybe four hours, maybe two hours again, whatever you can manage working on project B. You do this every day. Okay. You can also go, okay, for 20 minutes, I'm going to work on project A. And then for an hour later in the day, I'm going to work on project B. It doesn't have to be two hours. You choose the amount of time that is appropriate for your stamina. Mm -hmm. Right. And even if you set the timer for 20 minutes and just kind of go <laughs> for 20 minutes. That's okay. You're thinking about the project, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the timer goes off. You do something else during your day and you come back to your writing area and you work on project B. You can take sort of a pause, you know, some kind of have lunch, whatever you do, you know, do something, go for a walk, whatever. Okay. And you do that. I would say two projects a day is, is pretty good. I don't think you have to, unless, you know, you have some work for higher things that are due, but I think two projects a day is pretty good. Cool. Okay. The idea is that you're going to, they're going to start to reach completion. They're mm -hmm. going to start to reach the finish line and then you can swap them out for other projects. Okay. If you want. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Totally. totally. Okay. So you're just going to have to get kind of tough with yourself. You're going to have to use blinders, a timer is another form of, of, of blinders. Mm -hmm. You know, what do we do for 20 minutes? We just work. That's all we do. When the timer goes off, what have you done? You've done your work. I don't know what it looks like. I'm not asking you to send in the pages so I can check them off. You've just shown up for yourself at your work in your workspace. Okay. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Totally. Now, what took you so long to come here? I, listen, it's I've been knowing been you for years. Like, what? what? No. I know. <laughs> Yes, I really appreciate it. And okay, I'm going to come back tomorrow. And okay. So on. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Audrey. Um, we've got about 14 minutes left. Um, and we don't have a question at the moment. I could read. I'm reading. Who? I know some of you have this book. I could read. Okay. Uh, Audrey, just tell me if someone has a question. I'll let you know. I'm just going to read. You know, we had our special guest, um, our pretend special guest, um, who was uh, Helen Keller. And now it's Pima Children. I know. She it was a pretend. We have real people on this show, but I just, oh, I just happened to open it. It's a chapter called Gloriousness and Wretchedness. It's interesting. Life is glorious, but life is also wretched. It is both. 
Appreciating the gloriousness inspires us, encourages us, cheers us up, gives us a bigger perspective, energizes us, and we feel so connected. But if that's all that's happening, we get arrogant and start to look down on others. And there's a sense of making ourselves a big deal and being really serious about everything and wanting, to, and wanting things to be like that forever. I've got a question Gl when you're ready. There you go. See, I told you. <laughs> Jack. Okay. Uh -oh, yeah. Jack's like, quick. <laughs> Come on. Go ahead, Jack. Hi, how are you? Hey, man. Um, just kind of, I was thinking about tragedies and comedies mixing together. Because mm -hmm. um, I was writing now, okay, what's, what's this, you know, this play I'm writing? Like, what's the story about? It's like, well, there's, sometimes it's going to be really funny, but it has a, like a freaky, scary, bad yeah. ending, like a nightmare ending. So how do you, I mean, is that, I mean, is that possible to have, I don't know, like when you're working with those elements, I guess, how do you balance that? Like the tone of letting it still be funny, but disturb. I mean, sometimes like, I guess sometimes my work is disturbing, but it's funny, but then it's disturbing. So mm -hmm. like, like creating that nice balance for the audience so that they're not just like, ah, <laughs> you know. Right. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're already doing it. Man. It sounds like you're already doing it. I mean, you know, it's it sounds like um, if that's the kind of thing that you write, it sounds like you've found a way to achieve the balance already. I mean, it's. Uh, well, I, I would say that, but sometimes I know that it's like, sometimes my work is like in your face and uh, a little aggressive, but there's still like a soft, you know, humor around it. I mean, I guess like, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes watch like dramatic things and I'll start laughing because I was like, oh, that's really ridiculous <laughs> and it's funny. But, uh -huh. but then it's the same. I mean, I like, I like mixing those, those two worlds. I guess, I don't know, it's just, I can see it happening with the script that I'm that I'm working on, and I'm going, okay, this is going to get super intense, but there's it's a ridiculous situation that's happening, and so I don't know. It's just, I mean, I, it's, I, I, but is I, it I, palpable? I, I, I guess for people. Well, I don't. You're going to find out. You know, <laughs> you're going to find out when you start putting it in front of an audience, or when you invite people to read it, you know, or invite actors to join in. I think you're going to find um people who are going like yeah i get this you know I, I i certainly i mean gee turn on the news yo it's yeah. really funny and really horrible at the same time i mean that's the world you know that's the world that i live in anyway so i think you'll find people who are on the same page with you about that i i guess the question is sort of like do i take it from the the, com the comedic writer or do i let it be the dramatist like you know or do i just let it be do i take it from the what do you so do i so when i'm writing do i let it does do i make it as funny as you know take it as a comedy and just put pump up the comedy and and the ridiculousness or do i just let it be the the drama that's sometimes hilariously funny i, I think guess. it be what it is jack it is what it is i mean you let it be what it is man yeah you okay know, i mean like I said, it, it sounds like you're already going in that direction. It sounds great. And if you want it to be funnier, make it funnier. If you want it to be more edgy, make it edgier. But okay, you know, it sounds like it's going to be good. I'm, exci I'm ex excited about it. I mean, it's been very helpful checking in with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it is always interesting. I mean, this is the first time that I'm taking a script and I'm writing about people that I know, but it was really helpful when you said, honor that person, let the person become a character. Mm -hmm. It's a person I'm no longer friends with, but I, but it was a very rich person, <laughs> like in terms, and I really love that person, but it's, of course, the names are changing and, mm -hmm. and a lot of it's my memory. And like, so that's fictionalized, but <laughs> so I guess memory is a fiction. Mm -hmm. right. But anyway, yeah, it's fun. Thank you. That's cool. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Um, all right, we've got about seven minutes and we're gonna go to Grace. Hi, Grace. 
Hi, uh, Ray. Can't hear you. Yep, there you are. Hi. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Um, I had a question about, uh, so last time I talked to you, I was um, talking about the play that I was writing that I had gotten feedback on. Mm -hmm. um, and, if, and then uh, you suggested I get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. and, um, I've actually, I'd like to still get a second opinion, but I've gotten sort of swept into my teaching job. And I actually kind of re-saw the advice that my friend had given me and it um, started me on a rewrite that felt good. Oh. Uh, so, so I'm sort of like, still, I'm kind of like, mm, I'm sort of having a different problem right now. So the thing that I want to ask you the question about is um, it's kind of about like putting, putting pressure on um, myself as a writer, as I feel like I'm in a place that I'm, I like where the play is going, but all of a sudden I feel like I just, because I see it and because I feel like it's getting better, all of a sudden there's this pressure and I feel really um, stuck with it. So, uh, and to contrast that, I like haven't been able to write for the past, or I, it's been really slow for like the past, um, even like week, but I, I, I stepped away from it for, uh, a, for a session this weekend and started writing like short stories, which I have no, like, I'm like, I don't write short stories, um, which I shouldn't say, but like, I just, you know, I'm like, I don't have any preconception of that. So I just, it like flows out because it feels easy and non-pressured and like, it's just there. Um, and I think because I, because I, I do theater, I work in theater, I teach in theater, I just like have this pressure that is actually really shutting me down right now. Mm -hmm. um, that medium, and I just wonder if you could like speak a little bit to that. Like, are there? <laughs> do you have any tools or techniques or like some something? Yeah, yeah. So when it's so when it was it was difficult, and you had someone who gave you feedback that wasn't working, you weren't feeling the pressure. And now that you think they're no, you've redigested re their notes, which is great. I'm not saying get a second opinion if you don't need one now it's feeling good you're understanding you're like yeah those notes make sense and now you're you were kind of on a roll and getting some momentum and then you started feeling pressure that has slowed you down yeah yeah right okay so um not to minimize the, what you're going through but two things one you know um when you i don't know i've never run a marathon i've run like 20 five miles you know I've never like done a marathon but what I hear from people who run marathons is that you know those la that last mile like will kick your ass you know what I'm saying or I've never climbed Mount Everest but the air is rare up there and still they go they keep going you know what I'm saying with anything you know like President Obama used to say when I was an alderman in Illinois I was dealing with some knuckleheads and then I became president and I kept dealing with knuckleheads. They were bigger knuckleheads, you know? So <laughs> it's, it's just more, it's just more of it. Um, the best thing I found to, to embrace that difficulty is to show up every day. And you can show up every day and, and write short stories, you know, something that you're really, and, and just sort of avoid it, but that's not really showing up. Yeah. So if you show up and just sit with it, you know, put on your timer. Open your notebook or your pages or what have you. Maybe your notebook, because if you get some notions and ideas, you, you can write things down. Just sit with it. Just keep showing up day after day after day. Don't write something new. I mean, it, unless you really, really want to and put it down. But you can just show up and say, hi, I'm here. I know it's difficult. I'm here. Here I am. Here I am again. I'm going to go for a walk after 20 minutes and maybe at the end of the day, I'll, I'll show up for another 20 minutes. I'm going to show you that I am ready to receive. Right? Yeah. You're showing that you're, you've got what it takes. You're showing that you're a tough cookie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you can do it. Like I am here. You know, you don't want some like, you don't want to just coast and shit. What, righty? Oh, this is supposed to be easy? Oh, news to me. Shit, it's hard for me. I got to show up and be like, ah, you know? So you show up and 20 minutes is a good thing because it's not a lot of time. Okay, so you can show up for 20 minutes and kind of noodle in your notebook maybe. Ask your project to talk to you maybe. You're feeling pressure because maybe you have an opportunity to write something that 
you might like you know yeah so come on great cool <laughs> thank you you're welcome thanks grace great question grace thank you um we've got about a minute and a half and we're gonna go to lynn hey there lynn yes uh, i am I, I had to unmute myself we hear you hey Which girl is, uh a question about talking to your characters mm -hmm. you know so i'm taking a walk in the park and i'm talking to my characters you know or i'm talking to one specific you know at a time and they don't answer me i ask questions and they don't give me an answer I mean, what is the dialogue? I mean, it's a true improvisation, but how do you get them to mm -hmm. answer? Right, yeah. So first thing, Lynn, so you're talking to your characters outside? You're outside? Sometimes inside, sometimes sitting yeah. here at my work time. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh, great. But outside is really good. If you're walking, that's really good. That's like yeah. different sides of your brain going, right? That's a, an excellent thing to do while you're talking. Um, in meditation, it's called Kihen, walking meditation, but it's really, really good to get those brain hemispheres firing in interesting ways. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, if you're walking, if you're doing it outside, wear a device, because then you can talk to yourself and people think you're on the phone. So that's <laughs> just to let you have that. That's what I do. Like, you don't even have to bring your phone. Just put your, the end of your, your earphones in your pocket. Yeah, but these days I have a mask, so nobody thinks I'm. Crazy. No, no, no. You hold it like this. Well, you can, you can mumble like, but you also do the. It's, it's nice. You're right. You wear your mask. You're right. Problem yeah. solved. Problem solved. But uh, if you really want to, you know, you can just hold it above your mask. Um, yeah, you might talk to your characters, and they might not talk back. So how do you get them to talk back? Well, you listen because they are talking to you. Okay. They might tell, be telling you things that you're not very interested in. They might be telling you things that you really don't want to hear. They might be speaking in a soft voice. They might say two words while you were talking. Okay. Patience, you know, just patiently waiting. And again, like we were saying with Grace, you show up for a certain amount of time. You go for a walk or you sit at your desk or whatever, and you put the time in without worrying or stressing too much about the results. Mm. right so that's what we do we just keep showing up and figuring that if you keep showing up it's going to make all the difference in your work because okay. you will be doing the work regardless of the product does that make sense total yes thank you mm -hmm. thanks lynn well it is 601 601 all right all right 601 We'll do it. Well, so please, everybody, please sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday to Thursday, and I will send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern to come hang out with us at 5. All right. <laughs> Mwah, have a good day. Mwah. Thanks, SLP. You're the best. Okay. Yeah, you're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Bye-bye. <laughs>